Hold on to your precious metals, the next phase of the financial crisis has begun. In September, Wall Street and the financial industry began to panic as the short-term interest rates shot up as high as 10%, rattling the core of the bond market and the bank's purchase agreements or repo lending system. In response, the New York Federal Reserve Open Market Desk purchased $53.2 billion of treasuries to inject more cash into the banking system and to control the overnight lending rates between banks. The next night, they had to buy an additional $75 billion in treasuries. Then the central bank announced that they would continue with these $75 billion cash injections into the banking system to support the need for liquidity in the overnight repo transaction system until the second quarter of 2020. So what does all this mean? Let's take a closer look. First, it's important to understand the banking repo money market system and why it's failing. Banks need liquid cash to conduct daily transactions. When banks receive depositors' money, they only have to keep a small percentage as cash reserves. The rest can be loaned out to others to generate interest income. The Federal Reserve requires that every bank maintains a certain percentage of cash reserves. Banks with 15.2 million to 110.2 million in transaction accounts must hold 3% in reserve. Large banks, those with more than 110.2 million in transaction accounts, must hold 10% in reserve. These reserves are to be maintained in case depositors want to withdraw cash from their accounts. To meet the reserve requirements, banks borrow from each other overnight at a special interest rate known as the federal funds rate. This rate floats depending on how much banks have to lend. The amount they borrow and lend each night is called the Fed funds. For whatever reason, if a bank gets low on their cash reserves, they can enter into the cash repo market to basically borrow the cash reserves from another bank. These extremely low interest rate cash liquidity loans between banks are usually just for overnight and they're paid back the next day. The bank offering the loan requires the borrowing bank to provide collateral but agrees to repurchase the collateral with a fee. Generally, this collateral between banks takes the form of treasury securities because they are the safest and most secure form of collateral. Prior to the 2008 crisis, some banks were offering mortgage-backed securities as repo collateral, and we all know how that turned out. Just ask Lehman Brothers or Bear Stearns. In mid-September of this year, the repo interest rate, which usually runs between 2 and 3%, shot up to 10% because all the banks found themselves short on reserve cash, probably due to the combination of businesses that had to pay quarterly tax bills and at the same time, the Treasury issued billions in new bonds. This is when the New York Fed quickly began buying treasury bills to inject cash liquidity into the banking overnight lending system. The problem is that it's not stopping. It seems that the Fed has found a way to add hundreds of billions of new dollars into the economy without calling it quantitative easing. They are doing this by monetizing the nation's debt. When the Federal Reserve buys U.S. Treasury bills, bonds, and notes, it converts debt to credit or cash, freeing up capital that's locked in the debt and putting it back into circulation. The Fed buys these treasuries, issues the cash or credit to the Federal Reserve member banks, and then places the treasuries on their balance sheet. 
This process is called open market operations. Remember that the Federal Reserve is an independent banking and lending institution separate from the U.S. government. They have only been granted the power to control the nation's economy. The Fed's purchase of these treasuries in order to stabilize the banking system creates a debt to the nation's Treasury Department that will have to be paid back to the Fed someday. The monetization of a nation's debt only puts that nation further in debt. The next financial crisis is inevitable, and every Fed attempt to delay it only increases the severity of the impact it will have. Injecting more money into an economy that has a national debt close to $23 trillion and is already saturated with printed money is a precursor to an economic Armageddon. In my opinion, placing your wealth in a tangible asset class that has no third-party risk is the only way to survive this impending economic crisis. Do you agree with my opinion? Or do you believe there is another way to avoid this financial devastation? Let me know in the comment section below. A big thank you to all who support this channel, especially to those who take the time to like and comment. I don't monetize my channel, so your likes and comments really help the channel to grow and to be seen by others. If you are not yet a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. Then select the notification bell to be notified as soon as I post up new content. And as always, feel free to share this content with all.